All right, we've actually got quite a few good to go through. But we'll begin with the big package. Then we have this. And I think I can do this one without scissors. Oh, this one's absolutely not for children. The undressed version of Ladies vs. Butlers. 18 or older, not quite there. Next up, we've got this. Then we got this. Okay. I'm just looking for that receipt. And we've got one more. So at the top here, we have uh, Konosuba Season 2, second season in OVA, Steelbook version, which I don't think I had, but I'm going to add it to the pile of Steelbooks, just because no one told him life was going to be this way, English dub. Konosuba. The complete second season in OVA. Uh, next up, we have um, Fate Grand Carnival. Neko Arc. We are doomed. Sorry about that. I think there's just some asshole who likes to rev his car and the empty parking lot right next to a fucking apartment complex. Let's see. Anything to note here? Not sure. So let's just take a look. Okay, before I look in that... Definitely a lot of Fate Stay stuff. Ooh, there we go. A curiosity. Girls in Panzer Dust Finale 3. I guess the third movie. I haven't been mentally keeping track of how many movies there are, but whatever. Uh, OVA audio and movie audio. So we've got English dubs. We have um, movie plus OVA on one disc. On one disc. But it's more Girls Who's Panzer. Now granted, at this point, I am so far behind that... I'm not sure if I can really say anything. Um, what to do about this? I think I will actually very carefully try to open it off stream just to make sure it's stream appropriate because it's definitely one of those things that's borderline. And, you know, I, I can probably still take the plastic off here. And hopefully I can still show it. I mean, I've shown Monster Musume, I think. And that one was pretty... That is not a lot of clothing. That is not a lot of clothing. This is actually released under the Kid Media label, so they're technically treating this as hentai, I guess. 
Actually, it's 18 and older, not 16 and older. Yeah, see, there's Kitty there. And that's the Media Blaster's um, hentai division, essentially. So, we'll treat it as such. As such. Free road to the, wor to the world. The dream. Which, I don't know if I already had this or not, because I'm having trouble keeping track of the free stuff. We've got an English dub. A and B. Clonk. Movie on long Blu-ray disc. Let's see if it's a movie. Maybe I already did have it. There we go. There we go. For a while there, I thought they were preparing to skate, so I was a little bit confused because I'm like, "Wait, isn't this about swimming?" But no, they're they're about to. Go out to the swimming pool. Next up, we've got Ranking of Kings. Uh, is that a season one part? What does that even say? Unfortunately, I have this. Yeah, okay, it says season one, part one. So it says season one, part one. It's... Kind of a strange way to do it. Not a bad way, but... There we go. So yeah, this one I definitely thought was fairly well received. It is or was on Crunchyroll. Um, maybe something I'm going to watch, I don't know. Rating or regions A plus B. That's in the English dub. Small prints, big adventures from my studio. I don't pretend to know exactly what this is or and or will be like. Hmm. It's got a style going for it. That's for sure. Next up, we have The Vampire Dies in No Time, which kind of reminds me of 90s era stuff. So this could be a show that's, you know, inspired by something like that, or it could be something very different. It's really hard to say. But it's intriguing looking. And this plastic does not want to come off. Some really annoying plastic here. Didn't want to come off until it's time for too much of it to come off. Now it's just coming apart whenever it pleases in order to make itself impossible to take off. <sighs> That's the plastics for you. Regions A and B. That looks like an English dub. Yes, that is. From Arch Enemies to Roomies. Doesn't sound like it's set up like some of those 90s shows, though. But interesting. Oh, and last but not least, we have uh, A Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime Season 2, Part 2. Part 2? Part 2. Good, good. So then let's open this up. So, Regions A plus B, uh, English dub. This is all the limited edition stuff. Let me go over here real quick and grab the season two part one. Actually, let me do a little bit better than even just that. Because I see all of season one right here, so let's grab this. Just because that'll be kind of neat, you know. I've got all of season one right here, so let's um get this together. I'm gonna put it together in a way reminiscent of what I did for that. So let's begin by taking a look in the box. Box contains art cards, enamel pin, and sticker. All right, 
Okay, there's actually quite a few things. So here's the pin. Oh, there we go. That's Rima Tempest as a pin. We had um, a sticker of... I forget her name. She's very not the main character, so... You know. So my forgetfulness can get the better of me. Fun stuff. This was a more fun show. Cool beans. Except not everything here is the same size. Is that why? This thing is bigger than the others. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that it's bigger than the others. Very intriguing. Okay, uh, let's see. Season 2, Part 1. Should go in first. Then we'll have this booklet. Because, you know, you can put these in there in any order you want. We'll just flip through that to get an idea. And then that just leaves a uh, season two, part two. You know, regions A and B, and we still. I think we already talked about this stuff, so we can just take a look at the inside. Excuse me. Disc three, disc four, disc three, disc four. Very straightforward. Cool, cool. There we go. Now I've got it together like this so that it matches season one. Season one, season two. It's actually got some nice oomph to it. Yeah, that's season one. Okay. So then I can put this down here, and assuming I haven't done anything else, I can say uh, this is this week's anime DVD collection update. All right, a lot of stuff to go. So let's go ahead and begin with One Piece Season 12, Voyage 1. Um, I thought it felt it began a little on the weaker side. Um, something I would call a more filler feeling story arc. But I guess the real issue I had with it was it felt like the animation, the storytelling were a little lower than usual for One Piece standards. Maybe a bit of a break season. Except for some of the stuff involving the main baddie. Well, that would be from on the animation side. But outside of that, I don't know. It felt like a weaker story than a lot, of, a whole lot of stuff. It took the Bartholomew, is that his name? From the Barto stuff from um, season 11 and was continuing some of it. But it's wearing thin and feeling like oh, why do they keep doing this so the first story arc wasn't that great and then they finally got to the next story arc which I think was the main story arc and is kind of stuff that featured here and off to a much better start um, the idea is more fascinating a, a little more silly but not outside of the realm of things that could be done by One Piece and thus has been done by One Piece. Um, some of it felt like it was a little bit delaying our time, a little bit, but not too bad. It was still kind of amusing. But then, you know, it started introducing this world building stuff that One Piece does for this next piece of world and hints as to why it wasn't something that just came out of the blue. There were hints as to it existing before, etc. And just it just building up interesting stuff I like the designs of the new characters they are kind of um, anthropomorphic although I think the way it should be implied is a little bit opposite so like instead of humanized animals it's really more animi animalized humans and it's nothing that I can tell is actually too um, alarming it's actually kind of interesting what they've done. Some of it's just a little bit strange, but maybe staying within 
One Piece's level of strangeness, and that's fine. Um, not sure what to feel about it otherwise, just because there's been a whole lot of stuff in One Piece and how much it feels like it's building to the world level story versus a more individual level story is tricky to say. Felt like there was some of that with the previous arc. Maybe not as strongly as some of the previous arcs, I feel like, maybe. But maybe also not necessarily anything too bad. I don't know. A part of me hopes that One Piece isn't losing focus of things that it needs to focus on. The idea is that it started and it intends to maybe eventually finish. But I also sometimes feel drained by it. Now, granted, for this one, the first story arc in the first half of it is one of those things where just like, if I thought the rest of the One Piece was going to be that, I would have probably been tempted to give up on it. I mean, I was pretty exhausted. I'm still pretty exhausted. I'm having trouble recovering from stuff. Uh, but uh, second half, again, it that's actually much more entertaining and engaging and okay yeah let's see where you're gonna keep going with the series one piece so we've got that uh and then taking a look at my list of stuff over here classroom of the week so last week i said oh yes episode 12 well that was an interesting end of the season but actually there was one more episode that one more episode was an even better ending to the series because um or the season not an ending to the series uh because it felt like the last one could have been a bit of an ending, like it cut the length of rope needed in order to finish the project, but this one felt like it kind of tied it into a nice bow for the end of the second season, ready to go on to the third season, whenever that happens in the future. And what can I say? It would be uh, something I would look forward to. Um, pretty neat season finale. Uh, Spy, Fa Spy Family, season one, episode 15, which is the third episode since it started back up again. Um... Well, I think if you watch the first two episodes, then you're no surprise that episode three resolves with you finding out what they're going to name um, Mr. Dog. And I don't want to spoil that here because um, I thought it was actually really great. Compared to the previous two episodes, this episode maybe wasn't as strong, but it's still a pretty fun episode. Let's see, can I remember everything that happened in it? It was a very wrapping things up sort of episode for big story arc. And... <sighs> Sorry, I don't know where that came from. We pretty much got stuff that um, I feel like is the right kind of stuff to have gotten. It felt like I was being fed um, really high quality anime. So I'm looking forward to the next episode. I forget what the preview even said it was maybe about, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Next up, uh, Beast Tamer, episode three. Uh, yes. What did I think about it? Mm, I guess it's okay. Entertaining. Um, sometimes I feel like it has to make some characters out to just be really, really bad in order for it to come off as what it's doing and in that regard it's kind of okay maybe a little shallow feeling but only a little shallow feeling I guess in that regard maybe people find other elements of it to be also not so great and that's certainly your call but um definitely finding it kind of enjoyable a little bit straightforward but still kind of want to see what's going to happen as it continues to go forward because it tends to kind of do its own little thing in a kind of cute way that I actually am finding entertaining uh, let's see. Fourth episode of I'm the Villainous, so I'm taming the final boss. And I would say that was actually a pretty damn good episode. This is an episode where, um, to me, it feels like the show's admitting that even though it's set itself up so that you would think that it serves a certain, um, archetype in terms of what its first season is, it's telling you it's more than that. And I don't know how much more than that. It's just enough where it's just like, I actually like where this went. It's kind of similar to the previous one that, you know, there's some characters that have to be almost comic book villain in order to kind of have the story choose to do what it wants to do. But outside of that, it's actually pretty entertaining. Um, 
I'd say a really solid episode. If you watched three episodes of this series and you were still on the fence and you decided to drop it, I suggest you watch episode four. It's probably better than you would think it would be. Good stuff. Okay, so obviously while I watched One Piece with my um, Friday friend, we did have enough time to catch up on the two episodes of uh, Overlord Season 4. That's episodes 12 and 13. And that was actually a really interesting ending. Um, what can I really say about it? There, there was some elements of it that were a little unnerving. It's not the end of the series, not by a long shot. Or maybe it's maybe not by a long shot is wrong because at the very end it kind of almost suggested that maybe the next season could be the last season. I don't know. If so, that might not be a bad idea because this season I thought was a fine season, but definitely started feeling the risks of Overlord as a series continuing on. So, you know, they do need to. Continue marching forward to something, and while this one felt like it was still marching forward, they do need to be careful about what they choose to do. Um, and whether or not season five is actually the last season, or there's six or seven, I don't know. You know, all that stuff will have to be evaluated as it comes out. But fourth season right here, fourth season of a show, it's okay. I, I thought it was very enjoyable, and it had some interesting twists for what this season actually meant. Things I would call actually. Um, worthwhile things from a certain perspective. Hmm. Don't know what else to say. Just enjoyed them. Uh, let's see. I watched the entirety of My Isekai Life. I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world. And it was okay. Um, I, I, I would say it started off feeling like it was good, maybe potentially great. And then I can kind of see why maybe not so many people were liking it. And then it eventually reached a point where it's just like, oh my god, I, um, I, I, that they, they've been setting up that the main conflict of this season, at least, is a cult. And funny timing, um, within the last week, there was a, um, bad writing advice or terrible writing advice video which is about um, writing cults and you would almost think that they were using the terrible writing advice as um, guides on how to create the cult in this one because it it felt like that and because of that it just it meant that the series started off kind of feeling oh well, this is neat stuff uh, I guess it's kind of doing neat stuff okay because it's doing things this way like it because we don't have our main character being constantly surrounded by individuals that um, secretly know how great of a character he is or something like that you know it kind of means he goes from place to place and the things he does are kind of impressive it it beggars belief a little bit to take in that oh he doesn't understand that he's being over the top by doing it this way some some of it sometimes makes sense because he's got specific goals in mind but sometimes it's just like how would you not know that that's overkill? Um, he, th this is funny because this is another one where the main character is a beast tamer. And the title is a lie because it isn't about how he gained a second class. Um, my Isekai life, I became a two-class character and became the strongest sage in the world. That would probably be a much more accurate way to describe what happened in the series because it pretty much establishes that he went in there knowing one thing and then almost immediately learned the other thing just because of the one thing and then became overpowered. Um, there's definitely definite weakness in some of the stuff it does. Like if, it, if you want to think he's absolutely cool, there's kind of some of the movement that's going in. I don't mean the animation, but like the emotions he goes through. But the main problem is it tries to establish that there are potential rules in there, but it, it starts off on the very first episode or two just breaking that rule. To let you know it's there, which kind of makes it hard to feel like that rule actually means anything. Which is, in theory, what this character is doing. It's using a hella chicken foot ton of MP. And... It's the worst kind of lampshading, the kind that kind of draws attention to it, but doesn't really explain why, narratively, it's fine. Because it sets up the problem where... 
oh, yeah, he's now doing this thing that's going to require a lot of MP. Will he have enough MP to do it? Well, you kind of know it doesn't really matter whether or not he has enough MP to do it because they kind of cheat the, si the system in such a way such that they show you the result afterwards. So that, I guess it's kind of a show-don't-tell problem. They show you, oh, yes, these are the consequences of his action. More, more like they tell you the consequences of his action, not showing you them because they just kind of give you the end result. Oh, look, his MP is a negative one billion, but because his health got converted into MP. And literally this happens in the first story arc, so it's not as much of a spoiler as you might think. It's kind of cool, but it is one of those things where it's just like, they unintentionally gave themselves a cheat, and so you never quite feel like the main character is there, because you don't have this feeling of what that limit is. And you can almost compare this to some other similar things. Sword Art Online, the very first story arc, actually had a moment maybe sort of similar, except that one actually worked because that wasn't a multiple trick they used, and for that one you kind of had a feeling for how quickly people died. And you're like, it's really quick. So um, that one does better showing than telling. It sh shows you the consequences that other people have experienced, it shows you the consequences our main character is experiencing doing it, and gives you that thing there. But it works out because in that one, you're holding your breath a little bit. Even though you know our main character is not going to die, you're, you're like, that still seemed like a lot to take off. And this one, because even when he does that, the worst it gets is he just kind of collapses afterwards. So we never feel like he's pushing himself. It doesn't even feel like L from uh, Stranger Things where, you know, she looks like she probably has the world's biggest headache and her nose is just gushing blood like she's a anime a pervert or something like that. You know, that one at least kind of shows using the power kind of has this dress on her body. And this doesn't even really express that too well. Again, because it does it at the very end, it's definitely more of a tell-don't-show sort of thing. But overall, you know, that's a lot to complain about, but it pretty much just means it's got interesting setup characters. Um, it's actually very entertaining to watch go moment to moment. Um, you lose more of the main character, expectations of the main character, because they haven't given you proper... They, they, they have, they, they're not doing the proper weighty, but outside of that, it's okay. Let's see. Next up came Reincarnated as a Sword, Season 1, Episode 2. I don't know why I said Season 1, because there's only one season right now. Um, so, Episode 2, and I said Episode 1 was okay in terms of, okay, we got introduced to the sword and the girl that's going to wield him. But we didn't get a real good feel for what kind of show it is. And Episode 2, I felt, actually did a pretty good job. Um... I think the important thing they did that makes the setup of episode two well is episode one makes it seem like a, oh, so I'm a spider, so what? Well, okay, yeah, he is an independent sword. He's doing his own things as a sword. He's flying around and killing monsters on his own and killing these bosses. And he's like, I'm a real fucking badass sword, aren't I? And um, what they do in episode two is they kind of establish this thing where there's certain numbers out there that kind of suggest maybe he's not as badass as he thought. He is badass, but I think he shows his most when he's working with her, and it, the other good thing that was done is her using him doesn't feel like she's being dragged around by him and used by him. It actually feels like she's actually shining alongside him very well. And there's multiple reasons this happens in episode two, but it basically means that between the two of them together, they're pretty interesting. She's really great because she kind of has this very fun attitude. And I agree with the sword person. I forget everybody's name. Sword is right. She's such a good girl. Oh, wait. Her name was Fran, wasn't it? I'm thinking like Fran Bo from the game I played a month or two ago. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, overall the things that happen in here are kind of satisfying. I'm like, okay... I really like the way the two of these two work together because they feel great together. And in terms of your isekai medieval fantasy experiences, I want to see what they're going to be doing with the people around them. They're not like so obviously OP that um, 
you know, they may as well be a god walking among mortals, and they don't look down on people like that. So, it's one of those things where this show, episode two, is giving me really high hopes because they walk back some of the stuff that could have made it a little bit more of a rote watch episode by episode thing and gave it, gives it more of a dynamic potential. Really looking forward to it. Uh, let's see next up. I watched the first two episodes of The Eminence in Shadow. Uh, it's it's not bad, but it's it definitely feels way more um why am I forgetting the word? That word that means middle schooler syndrome. Um where the people wear the eye patches and pretend and it's not entirely that, but it is a little bit of that mixed with the character who's actually doing that sort of stuff, and so there's some stuff in there that's vaguely blatant power trippy. Like, it's hard to say why it wouldn't be anything else, especially since the characters, our main character, keeps building up and up being girls for some reason. Like, I feel like the concept he was coming up with wouldn't build a harem, per se. It would build an organization if that was the case, but even then, it's not like being set up as an organization building. So, it's doing some stuff that's kind of cool, but it's only cool for the sake of cool as opposed to I feel like it's cool for the sake of it's telling a good story, per se. That's my feeling, at least. Um, I'm definitely going to give it at least another episode. I could probably give it more than that, um, depending on how I feel after episode three, but I could definitely... It felt, watching the first two episodes, that it was... Trying to be in a certain mindset without actually being able to be in that mindset, I guess. So, a little bit of a miss, but maybe not necessarily a flop. And not necessarily bad, just definitely something that's not syncing perfectly with me. <clears throat> Next up, um, episode two of Management of a Novice Alchemist. Mm, neat, cutesy. Um... I, it's definitely a cute girls doing cute things. It doesn't feel like there's much in the way of direction to it, other than just kind of walking forward a little bit. So I'm watching it, but I'm not sure if I'm feeling, oh yes, this is why our main character is awesome. Because I think to some degree she is, but it's also not about really showing that sort of stuff. So it's, again, you're supposed to find the, girl, the girl, girls cute and enjoy watching it because it's cute girls doing cute things. I think. That was my impression of episode 2. Strong, more strongly than episode 1, but episode 1 did the setting up our main character stuff first and I've got hiccups. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Episode 3 of I've Somehow Gotten Stronger When I Improved My Farm Related Skills. I'd say it's kept course. It's... It feels like a show that, again, doesn't have its ideas entirely um, thought out. Like, okay, our main character fighting this impossibly strong thing and said, it'll take more than that to knock down a farmer. It's, it'd be funny if it weren't deliberately false. And it doesn't feel like he's saying that as a farmer. It feels like he's saying that as somebody that's just supposed to say that as somebody that's supposed to be thought of as being from a farmer. But it's it doesn't feel it doesn't really feel that farming angle. He's he's just an overpowered character who um that's their reason they gave, but it doesn't feel like it really defines him that well. It's not necessarily bad, but it it's I think um the story is a little bit shallow compared to a whole lot of the other stuff I've been talking about. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bad or unwatchable, but it does mean that, okay, it's got a little weakness here. Not every medieval fantasy is going to be good. You're going to have some people that don't quite do it right for one reason or another. But, yeah, I think that's all the stuff, all the anime I watched. Um, Sunday, you know, this is uh, October, and my Twitch friend is watching, um, you know, scary movies, or at least movies that are appropriate for the season, and 
the movies we were planning to watch, the first one wasn't as available. It was available like two days prior, but then it got moved to painting. She doesn't make a whole lot of money, so understandably, um, you know, that's not the sort of thing she can just splurge on, especially as for a simple communal thing, which basically just amounts to like a handful of people, not not even five people watching with her. So it's understandable she can't splurge. Um, so we changed things around because it turned out that the movie that I had introduced the idea for to her the week prior was available on Netflix, and that's The Mist. And I don't remember the last time I watched it. Um, I definitely talked. Well, did I definitely talk about it? I probably talked about it in whatever video I recorded back when I watched it. But it feels like it was so long ago, I'm pretty sure... I think all my brothers still lived at the parents' house still. Although I don't know if that makes sense from a timeline perspective. But it does mean that it's been a long time. And I think the only reason I was able to suggest it and actually watch it this time is because it's been so long. Because Jesus Christ, that movie's a punch in the gut. It is an, a very phenomenal piece of horror. Watching it the second time, I can just truly appreciate the fact it really hits you from a lot of different angles at the same time. And it's not like um, it's the only horror movie that does that, but it does a lot of them, a lot more than most movies, and it does all of them so well. And I kind of knew what the, watching this movie would probably do to her. Maybe not everything, but she actually made it through the whole movie and experienced it the way that I would have thought she should, so... That's good. It was also bad because, you know, it's, um, it, it really is a very impactful movie. And maybe not a touching impact, but more like a, well, I, um, didn't know I could get through a movie that would actually do that to me. Jesus Christ. So, you know, I had suggested that we watch that first, knowing that was a huge possibility, so that the second movie we watched would potentially, um, help with that. And there, it was just a guess that it would. Um, that one was the scary movies to tell in the dark movie that came out a couple years ago. And, you know, I never grew up on scary movies to tell in the dark, but not having had that, I would still say it was actually a pretty nice movie. Definitely better than Winchester, which I mentioned last week. Um, because from a storytelling perspective, there's definitely a buildup of feeling of danger. And the scary scenes have very explicit places and functions and they are implementations of scary movies from the book of scary movies to, or scary stories to tell in the dark but um this one went for an overall narrative and as opposed to a episodic in a single movie sort of thing which i thought worked out pretty well it it yeah, not a, not somebody who's never seen the series before and not, never been experienced to the stories before. I thought they were actually pretty neat. Um, a lot of creepy Uncanny Valley sorts of stuff. Some of it's, like, not perfect. It's not going to be my most top scary movie ever. But it was still one that if you haven't seen it and you kind of have a feeling for that kind of stuff, maybe... Uh, I went into it having read Goosebumps, and so I expected certain things from certain characters because they had cer set certain things up as possibilities, and I never went down any of those routes. So there's a bit of unpredictability there from somebody who maybe wasn't a big fan of Goosebumps, but did read some a lot of Goosebumps. Some. I don't know how many I read. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. And I, I thought I saw that there's a second movie in production, so I'm definitely quite curious about how that will turn out. Um, chances are I might be able to watch it with these same friends. I would appreciate that simply because um, since they knew the original material that this is being built off of, they're able to kind of expand upon that, and I appreciate that. All right, there we go. Is there anything else to talk about? I don't think so. I guess uh, the Halloween event started for Dead by Daylight, but I've completely exhausted myself. I completed the first tome of the Halloween, or the first page of the Halloween tomes. So I'm waiting for the second page to come out. I'll figure that shit out. It comes out in a couple days. Wednesday, I'm guessing. But, uh... Yeah... Or is that Thursday? 
I don't know. Wednesday or Thursday this week. And then I'll figure out what I'm doing from there, which is probably doing as much of those as I can. But I'm just barely mentally keeping up, physically keeping up on Dead by Daylight. Other stuff is just falling behind. I'm barely able to take care of Animal Crossing every single day. I'm, I'm doing the most minimal stuff, but I'm um, keeping up. Whatever. At this point, I'm kind of fading out and blabbering, so I should wrap things up. Y'all, have a nice week.